How's it going guys, I'm Theo Joe, and as you probably know, wireless charging has been around for a long time. It's nothing new, but there is some renewed interest in it, especially now that the new iPhone has wireless charging in it for the first time, so a lot of people are now interested in it. And you might be wondering how exactly it works. It's almost like magic. You don't even have any wires touching the phone, but somehow the energy is still able to transfer between them. How does that all work? So that's what we're gonna explain in this video. It's actually not as complicated as you think. It's some basic physics principles, and don't let that scare you, because even though I might mention some complicated sounding words, I assure you that you should have no problem understanding the basics of how this works, and it's pretty fascinating. So let's get started. Now, the basis of all wireless charging is going to be a law of physics called Faraday's Law of Induction. And the basic of this is that if you take a loop of wire and you have a changing magnetic field passing through it, it will induce a current through that wire. So this could be something as simple as moving a magnet past the wire back and forth. That's a changing magnetic field or flipping the magnet over itself. That's also changing and those will induce currents into that wire. So you could probably by now see how this is pretty useful and where this is going. We now have a way where we can essentially create an electrical current without even touching the wire. So how exactly does that come into play while charging the battery? Well, with wireless charging, you're gonna have two main components. You're gonna have the base station, which does the charging, it's plugged into the wall, and then the phone, which is gonna have a loop of wire inside it, and it's going to get charged through that. Next, another very important thing to know is that if you put a current through any wire, whether it's AC or DC, it's going to create a magnetic field around that wire, and that is also very important. If you have a DC, it's going to create one magnetic field that basically stays the same, and if you have AC, it's going to create an alternating current, but it's gonna flip every time you flip the current because it's alternating, so you could probably see where that is going as well. So with the base station, you're gonna create an alternating current. It's not just gonna be flowing in one direction through its circuit, it's gonna go back and forth, which in turn is going to create an alternating magnetic field, which is a changing magnetic field. So now you can see that if you take that coil of wire that's attached to the phone and you put it near that base station, which is creating that wild and crazy magnetic field, it's gonna start inducing a current into that coil, which is then going to go into the phone without even touching it. And then there's gonna be some circuitry that will convert that AC into DC, and now you'll have a DC current that goes into the phone just as if it was coming off the wall, except it's gonna start with a coil of wire instead of a wire going into the wall. All right, so you might understand that, but you might still be thinking, wait a minute, if the phone and the base station are not touching at all, then how do the electrons move from the base station into the phone to transfer the energy? How does that even happen? Well, the truth of the matter is, not one single electron transfers from the base station to the phone. It's not needed. And even if you plug it into the wall, the phone directly into the wall, still not one electron transfers into the phone. They're already in the phone, we just need to rearrange them. So that's what we're gonna get into next, which is even more fascinating. All right, so back to the phone. How is the energy actually stored in the battery? If it's not just a matter of adding electrons, how does it work? Well, like I just said, the energy comes from the movement of the electrons, not the electrons themselves. And as I said before, that phone is gonna have basically the same number of electrons at all times. It's just gonna be that the chemistry of the battery means that those electrons will be arranged differently depending on whether the phone is charged or depleted. When the battery is charged, you're gonna have an electric potential difference between the two sides, which means basically that one side is more positive or negative than the other. And when it's depleted, it's gonna be at equilibrium. So when your phone is charged, that means that all the electrons have been forced onto one side and they really wanna to go to the other side. Just like if you're holding up a bunch of marbles and you're holding them high up, they want to go down near the earth, but you're not letting them. You're storing that energy by using your muscles to hold them up. So it's not like the energy is necessarily from the marbles, but if you drop them, then it's gonna create a lot of energy just from them being up high. 
And then when you wanna actually do something with the phone, like turn it on or run the processor or watch your video, you're basically allowing some of those electrons to go to the side that they want and meanwhile, you're harnessing that energy as they're releasing it while moving over to the other side. You're siphoning it off. As those electrons move over to the other side, they're happy. They don't wanna move anymore, but you still have a bunch of electrons that are gonna be moving, and as they do, eventually you're gonna reach equilibrium. So one side of the battery is gonna be equal to the other side in terms of how many electrons versus protons. So there's not really a reason for one electron to go to the other side. They're happy where they are, they're in equilibrium. So now we can get into the charging itself. So as we know before, we have this AC current coming into the phone, whether it's from the coil or maybe it's from the wall. And in either case, it has to be converted to DC. So it's not flipping back and forth anymore. We don't need that. It just needs to go in one direction. And there's a special circuit that can do this called a full wave rectifier. Not gonna get into that, but just know that we now are going to convert the AC into DC, which is much more useful. So now that we have this DC current, we are able to use it to create a new potential difference in the opposite direction on the battery. So we can kind of direct it in the opposite direction that the electrons wanted to go originally and basically flip the board, so to speak. So now the battery is no longer in equilibrium and the electrons want to go back. And this is very simplified. In reality, there's lots of chemistry going on in the battery, which is why the current is able to do this. So don't worry about all that though. Just know that the DC makes it so the electrons wanna to go to the other side again. So now we have the whole picture. We can see why we don't need anything to touch between the charger and the phone because we don't need any new electrons. We just need to move them and we have ways where we can transfer that energy and get them to move without them touching. So where does that energy come from in the first place then? And the answer of course is the power station, miles and miles from your house. And at the power station, what's going on is basically they're gonna have different turbines which are turning, whether it's from water or steam or whatever. And this is going to essentially, again, use induction to create all sorts of currents. But the essential result is that you're gonna get AC current coming out of the power station, churning back and forth. It's gonna be churning these electrons back and forth constantly. So you're not actually transferring any electrons from the power station into your home. It's just moving those back and forth in the outlet. So you're not actually getting any new electrons because you already have all the electrons in your devices. They just need to be reworked using the actual energy stored in the movement of the electrons coming from the power station. Here's an analogy that might help. So imagine a grandfather clock. You have the weights, you have the pendulum, and then the clock but really the energy is stored in the, the weights. But it's not the weights themselves that are creating some sort of energy, it's because they're stored up high and they're dropping that when you're using that gravitational energy as they go down, you're harnessing some of it to turn the gears in the clock. And how do you put them back when they're at the bottom? Well, you need an external power source. In this case, you could use the muscles from your arm to put them back up and now they have more energy again. So you're taking the energy and putting it in just from rearranging where they are. It's not like as they drop down, they get used up and you can't use the weights anymore. You can reuse them as long as you put them in the right place and then it can swing the pendulum just like when you have the battery. The electrons can be used again if you just have a way to move them back and they wanna go back just like the weights want to drop and use up the energy as they do that. So I think that should help you understand pretty much everything. I think I explained it pretty well. I don't know, you can let me know in the comments. But now when you get a new phone, whether it's an iPhone or whatever, when you put it on that wireless charger, you can understand what's going on. It's pretty awesome. But anyway, if you guys wanna keep watching some other videos, I'll put those right here. You can just click on those. Also, if you wanna subscribe, I make a few new videos every week, but also be sure to enable the bell next to the subscribe button for notifications, or else YouTube might not even show you the new videos at all. It's pretty bad. In any case though, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys either here or on social media like Instagram or Facebook. So let me know what you think. And as usual, of course, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.